pretty much guarantee that if you examine members of the same family, it won't be too hard for you to notice resemblances between them. Unless a family has a set of identical twins though, you wouldn't expect to see any two members looking identical, even if a set of parents has 20 children. The reason for this variation, not only in the members of one family, but in any population of sexually reproducing organisms, is the underlying mechanism by which gametes or sex cells are produced, which we call meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division during which the number of chromosomes decreases to half the original number by two divisions of the nucleus, resulting in the production of gametes. Meiosis is often confused with mitosis, the reproduction of somatic or body cells, such as skin or blood cells. While both processes involve the formation of new cells, there are some major differences between them. For example, somatic cells divide by mitosis to form more somatic cells, while only germ cells can divide by meiosis to form gametes. The new cells, which we call daughter cells, resulting from mitosis, have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. Meiosis, on the other hand, generates daughter cells with half the number of chromosomes. Mitosis can happen in asexually reproducing organisms, whereas meiosis only happens in sexually reproducing ones. And finally, mitosis involves one nuclear division, whereas meiosis involves two. Like mitosis, meiosis is divided into different stages. But unlike mitosis, where there's only one cycle of cell division, in meiosis there are two consecutive cell divisions, which we call meiosis I and meiosis II. The second division results in each cell having half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. We refer to these cells as being haploid to distinguish them from cells that contain the complete set of chromosomes, which we refer to as a diploid. This reduction in chromosome number is important so that when the sperm and egg join during fertilization, the correct diploid number is reached. Let's review the steps of meiosis one and two. Interphase is a step that occurs before meiosis and it's a period of cell growth and chromosome duplication. By the end of interphase, each chromosome has duplicated and consists of two identical chromatids. Prophase I is the first stage of meiosis and it is a long phase as a lot has to happen before the cell moves on to the next phase. The chromosomes which were replicated during interphase condense and pair up with their homologs in a process called synapsis. Both chromosomes of each pair of homologous chromosomes consist of genes controlling the same characters but one member of the pair is the maternal chromosome and the other is the paternal. Once the homologs are paired up by synapsis, crossing over takes place between the maternal and paternal chromatids, resulting in a structure known as a tetrad. Crossing over eventually results in exchange of DNA, which serves to increase the genetic diversity of offspring. Near the end of prophase I, the nuclear envelope breaks down and the spindle forms, setting the stage for metaphase I. In metaphase I, the homologous pairs are attached at the centromeres to the spindle fibers and they line up along the equator of the cell, also known as the cell plate. The shortest stage of meiosis I is anaphase I. Here, the spindle fibers pull one chromosome from each tetrad toward each end of the cell. Each chromosome still has two chromatids. The effect of crossing over can now be seen clearly, with each chromosome containing a bit of DNA from its homolog. The last phase of meiosis I, telophase I, is characterized by the arrival of chromosomes to the opposite poles of the cell. A new nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes, and this occurs simultaneously with cytokinesis, or the pinching off of the cytoplasm to form two new cells. There's only a brief interface between telophase I and prophase II. It is used mostly as a resting stage for the cells, and no chromosome duplication happens.
The first stage of meiosis II is prophase II, and we see events similar to what we saw in prophase I. So the spindle apparatus containing the spindle fiber forms, the chromosomes condense again, and the nuclear membrane that surrounds them dissolves. During metaphase II, the individual chromosomes, consisting of chromatid pairs, line up on the cell equator. This differs from metaphase I, where we saw pairs of homologous chromosomes lining up. During anaphase II, the centromeres break down and the sister chromatids begin to separate as the spindle fibers shorten. Separated chromatids, which we now refer to as chromosomes, move to opposite ends of the cell. During the last phase, telophase II, nuclei form and the chromosomes begin to decondense. Cytokinesis occurs, resulting in four haploid daughter cells, each genetically unique due to the crossing over that occurred in prophase I. So to summarize, meiosis starts out with a diploid cell that undergoes two consecutive rounds of cell division to result in a total of four haploid, genetically unique daughter cells.